Welcome to Seattle Side Up TV. My name is Ian Loney along with Matt Page and Abraham Deweese. And we're back with our way too early projections for the Seattle Seahawks. Now, so far, our projections have the Seahawks going into uh, week seven as a five and, with a five and one record. And this week, uh, we're going to cover their games with the uh, Santa Clara 49ers and the Dallas Cowboys. So, first of all, uh, let's talk about the Santa Clara 49ers. Uh, they have had some pretty wholesale changes on their roster. That they have, yeah. It, incredible, like, I don't know, record-breaking turnover in one season. <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of been sad, almost. No, I'm happy. I, yeah, I'm so happy that they're turning over everybody. But the problem is, is we lose that awesome rivalry, you know? Yeah, it, I guess. It, I mean, yeah, yeah, we love to see them fall, but only so far. But it becomes kind of sad. Yeah, no, I want them little... to fall to the ground, and then I want to kick them as they're on the ground, writhing in pain. <laughs> okay. I mean the team, not the fans. Uh, all right, so I'll talk about their offense a little bit, I guess. Okay. All right. Uh, so last year, obviously, they uh, they had they had quite the rushing game, mm -hmm. and this year they have the new coordinator, the new coach, and it still looks like they're going to try and they're going to try to do a power running game, establish the run, set up the pass that way. Right. But moving forward, they 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 kind of lost Frank Gore a little bit. You know, they don't have any running backs. <laughs> So they, who's uh, going to step in and, and try and take his place there? Well, they did pick up Reggie Bush, mm -hmm. and they have Carlos Hyde. Real they, between the tackles guy, yeah. Yeah, they think they think Carlos Hyde is the man who's going to okay. take it over. Uh, but Re Reggie Bush, of course, you know his bread and butter is the is the uh, mm -hmm. screen pass. Uh, so you know some 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 key points there. They're they're still strong. They still have Colin Kaepernick. I know we hate him as Seattle. We absolutely <laughs> hate him. But you have to admit he does have some talent. Uh, you got to respect the talent. <laughs> you may not respect the player, but you have to respect the talent. Uh, he, you know their wide receiver core. They do have uh, they do have uh, Anquan Bolden still, mm -hmm. and they got the they got Vernon Davis at tight end, and they do have, of course, like I said, they have Reggie Bush, but uh, which adds a good dimension to their short passing game. Who is you there? have, you've, I'm sorry to interrupt. You have been on Colin Kaepernick ever since the University of Nevada. Yes. You've been into this guy. I like him. Since the first second you saw him step foot. On I the hate that he's, a C that he's a 49er, but I, I actually, to be honest, I was calling for the Seahawks to draft him. Well, I remember that. You actually wanted him yep. uh, in place. Because he broke records at the combine for the most accurate passer. Yeah. He also that ruined Boise State's perfect season back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and he, and, he, and he had an awesome set of legs. He's a Take that, you potato-eating jerks. <laughs> he's, a lesser, he's a lesser talented Russell Wilson. Oh uh, really? I think the physicals are all there. I think mean, the physicals are all I there. Think, I, think the, I don't think the, the the mental game is all there. I agree. I, I think, think he's think accurate of a pass. He's not either. as disciplined. Uh, however, this this off season he did work with Kurt Warner to try and improve really? his passing game. Spent some good time there, and Kurt Warner is, you know, he won what at least one Super Bowl. Yeah. So he's got some he's got some experience there. He knows how to do it. Uh, they, the one, they do have some weaknesses set up still, though. They, they lost three starters on the offensive line. And if you want to do a power running game, you need an offensive line, unfortunately. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and is Hyde ready? I, we don't know. I don't, I don't know if he can carry Frank it. Frank Gore has been the staple of that offense Frank for a long time. Gore, even when he's banged up, he's still, as the year goes by, he gets stronger. And then the other thing is, is they added Torrey Smith. And Torrey Smith... I don't have the highest opinion of. He's a kick returner. He is an incredible pick, kick returner, punt returner, but he is not a wide receiver. No. So all that said, the offense is probably going to be pretty decent. Now, uh, it's going to be okay. Okay. Now the defense, on the other hand, is probably going to have some problems. And why do you think that? I think they're going to have a lot of problems. Okay. So now let me throw this at you. When Vic Fangio, the old defensive coordinator, was there, these guys finished in the top ten defense for three years in a row. Only two other teams that have done that. Our Seahawks mm -hmm. and the Carolina Panthers. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, last year the 49ers, they were tenth in points given up, fifth in total yards, fifth in pass rush. Yep. I mean, they're right up there with the Seahawks, with the Cardinals, with the Panthers, and everything. But you lose Vic Fangio, and mm -hmm. you also lose lose a hard, hard ass. Sorry, you know uh, John Harbaugh, <laughs> who jumped all over players who screwed up, yeah. and then also helped them get better as well. But you bring it in. Eric Mangini. Do you guys remember Man Genius? Oh. The guy who did nothing but... Yeah. The guy who did nothing. Yeah, there we he go. He did nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, his philosophy is he doesn't take a cookie-cutter approach. He tailors the defense, and I do like this. He tailors 
the defense for the players who yeah. he has. You know, you you coordinate with what you have. The only problem here is you're losing Parrish Cox, you're losing Chris Culliver, Justin Smith, Ray McDonald, Chris Borland, Dan Sitka, Patrick Lillis. Yeah, their the entire list linebacking on core is on crazy. And, on. and uh, you know, even though I like his style, Man, uh, Mangini, he wasn't very that very impressive as the Jets head coach or the Browns head coach. Now, Niners do have something. They have Darnell Dockett coming in oh, yeah. from the Arizona really Cardinals. Pick up. They have. They still have Alvin Smith. They still have uh, Ahmad Brooks and Navarro Bowman should be coming back from that gruesome, just horrifying knee mm-hmm. injury oh. from a while back. So, all that said, oh, what do you guys think is going to win this game? What do you think their chances are against the Seahawks next year? I'm still having flashbacks from the Bowman Bowman knee injury. That was it was ugly. Terrifying. It was very ugly. But let's see it again on replay. Injury. Uh, as far as as far as this game, I think it'll be a blowout for the Hawks. I think we're just going to steamroll them this year. Absolutely. I'm calling a loss. The really? Seahawks are going to lose this one. Uh, the Seahawks are coming off of a couple of couple of tough games, and they're going down to Santa Clara. I think the Niners are going to be up for this game. This is their. This is going to be their like you know mid season uh, Super Bowl. So you think it's going to be like the Rams usually are against us, where they just step up big because it's like mm, yes and no. I think there was an incredible amount of embarrassment mm-hmm. when we were eating turkey on the fifty yard line. <laughs> oh, Zerfield. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, I yeah. think I think there's going to be cheap shots abound and a close win for the 49ers. Now I predict a close game because I think the Seahawks will probably start this game a little bit flat just because I imagine the Niners will be something like 2-5 and five coming into this game. So I, I expect a closer game than what it probably should be but I think the Seahawks will end up pulling it out. Alright, fair enough. So that said, um, we're on to the the, net, the, game, the following game which we're getting toward mid-season now. It's the Dallas Cowboys which should be a big one. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? So... <laughs> <laughs> someone's not so, a someone's not a fan of uh, no I'm not a fan of the Cowboys or, or their America's team, America's team. they're not they America's team, team for they sure. are no, not they're America's team the Packers Green, Green Bay the Packers player. are America's team because they're owned by America but yeah. anyway the Cowboys are just a bunch of Cowboys yeah, pretenders last year had an incredible season yes they uh, did they really did they so came out of left field they surprised they surprised us surprised me I had them in the uh, last year you know and they, and they surprised everyone to I mean, be fair they were well to be fair they were eight and eight for like what 20 years in a row yeah, yeah. they were so it's easy to project to keep doing that yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh they you know they finished they finished second overall in rushing offense mm-hmm. now yeah we'll get to it but that's not going to happen again this year yeah uh you know overall uh they've got uh they've got the same the same coordinators and it's scott linhan who's who ran it last year he's there again ex, ex husky yeah ex husky yeah he, he loves running and the problem is is they kind of lost marco murray so they, they kind of lost. They kind of lost. Him. They definitely lost. They didn't really need him anyway. So he, he walked away and he went where? Oh, to a division rival. Oops. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> that was the biggest mistake. Uh, but the uh, so obviously the attack will probably they'll try to be a little more balanced. And uh, and and moving on, they they have uh, they have one of the best offensive lines which, in the NFL, which was as much a key to their running game as Demarco Murray. Which is why I think they. Which is why I think Demarco Murray looked as good as he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they they also have Des Bryant, who is far and away one of the best. He's top five, but he's he holding out. But he's holding out, so he's kind of a question mark, unfortunately. He's actually an unrestricted free agent. Yeah, or they, restricted. I'm sorry, he's a restricted. He's free He's restricted, agent. and they tossed the franchise tag on yep. him. Yeah, yeah. And he's saying he's not gonna he's not gonna sign. It's kind of a negotiating tactic. They still have some time here to figure it out. We'll see what happens, but the last time this happened to the Cowboys was Emmett Smith, who actually didn't play for four games. Wow! And he he they finally they finally signed him, and they went on to win their second consecutive or their second Super Bowl in a row. That was back in the nineties. Yeah. But doesn't Des Bryant just come in and dominate regardless of whether he goes Des to the training camp? Or Bryant not? is insane to watch. That that mm-hmm. pass or that catch that wasn't a catch against the Lions in yep. the uh, in the playoffs was insane. Catch it wasn't a catch. Uh, anyway, uh, some other other strength though they they do have Tony Romo. Tony Romo is is in my opinion he's like Andy Dalton. He's an underappreciated, very quality quarterback. He's not great, but he is very solid, and he is definitely never what's wrong with this team. This team no. has never had a defense. That's the problem. Unless he's the in, holder. In all Romo, boy. Well, okay, there was one time <laughs> it was Romo's fault. One time, all right, but. 
in general, it's never been his fault directly. The defense sucks, and they're starting to finally address that. But we'll let we'll let Ava get into that. As far as as far as you're doing big, my job for me. Now. Sorry, the okay. biggest holes. The biggest holes, obviously, the rushing game. Without without Demarco Murray there, they got they brought in Darren McFadden from uh, from the Oakland from Oakland Raiders, who has a lot of miles. Was awesome in college, but never really developed. Hmm. They're hoping that behind this offensive line, pretty much anyone can be awesome. The other three guys behind him aren't even worth discussing. They're not worth going into any further. The the leather question that this offense has, though, is after Jason Witten, who's a very reliable tight end, mm -hmm. and Tony Romo's favorite target, uh, there's Des Bryant, and then there's, like, no one else. Yeah, who else is going to pick up there's the slack for no him? One. So, I if they don't sign Bryant, or Bryant get, goes down, got, mm -hmm. you have a bid with, a, with an injury, their passing game dies. Yeah. So, as far as I'm concerned, this season, uh, offensively, is looking for a big step back. Okay, so that said, what do you think of their defense next year? Yeah, it wasn't I took good a, last year. Yeah, I took a look at it, and uh, I have in my notes here, defense sucks as per Matt. So thank you, Matt, for doing my work Thanks, for Matt. me. Yeah, but I'll try to expand <laughs> on that. Okay, so the defense actually ranked, uh, they ranked 19th last year, which is, you know, uh, mid, mid, fair to Midland. Mm -hmm. uh, rush defense was pretty good, but the pass defense wasn't that great. Um I think those numbers are hyperinflated by a very good offense last yes, year. Yes, I agree. Where they didn't have to be on the field all that much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so their defense is a Rod Mirinelli defense. Uh, Rod Mirinelli, where do you remember that from? Um, Detroit. Yeah, he was Detroit former Lions, Lions. Head coach, yeah. And what, did, what was his record one year at the Detroit Lions? Oh, yes, he had the infamous 0 season. Did he win? Season. I don't think he won. <laughs> no, he didn't win. He's the Ty Willingham of Detroit. Uh, oh, so, oh, but he is. Dude. But he, hey, I'm the Husky fan. You think I'd be the most upset? But he's a Monty Kiffin disciple, so he plays a pure cover two, where all the linebackers play pass defense. Tends not to go into a nickel. Definitely doesn't go into a dime defense at all. Um, strengths? Well, they got some good players. Uh, they have uh, Skandrick. He's one of the best slot guys in the business, and uh, they just drafted a couple couple intra interesting prospects. Uh, we have Yukon's. Byron Jones, considered maybe the best cornerback in the whole draft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They also drafted in the second round Randy Gregory out of the University of... Nebraska. There you go. It was a steal. And the Corn Husker. Now, the guy has a penchant for getting into a lot of trouble. Reminds one of a Seahawks Frank Clark. But, you know... Well, how about a young Des Bryant? Or young Des Bryant. Or a Greg Hardy, who is another player that, the Dallas, that Dallas has. They're hoping that Greg Hardy, who is a all pro defensive end hybrid character um they're, they're hoping that he can not you know he can beat the uh nfl system a little bit and not be suspended for the whole season yeah because this guy would make that ratchet that defense up and make it really amazing but without greg hardy and if randy gregory does doesn't end up being anything yeah there's no pass rush so, <laughs> so <laughs> with no pass right. rush, there's none. Yeah. There's none. I mean, it, it would be better if, like, the three of us did Sock Puppet Theater <laughs> chasing, chasing you know, uh, Russell Wilson. That that would be more effective. Well, than might actually be pretty effective now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in addition to no pass rush, Sean Lee, an all-world uh, inside linebacker, seems to always get injured. Um, and they're relying on Byron Jones and Ren Randy Gregory mm -hmm. to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're relying on rookies to do something, yep. you're you're gonna have a bad time. You're on a wing and a prayer. Oh, well, yeah. it could go well, but it usually will not go well. <laughs> so you guys, what do you th what do you guys predict for this game? We go into Dallas and we just take it to them. Take them to the mm -hmm. woodshed. That defense is no good. That defense cannot stop Marshawn Lynch. Jimmy Grant's gonna run roughshod on a very poor uh, set of strong, uh, a poor set of safeties. Mm. I think we burn the place down also. I think, I think we just walk <laughs> in there, just burn, just set fire. Just set fire to, uh, to, uh, um, Jones World or Jerry's World. Jer Jerry, Jerry Jones Jerry, World. Jerry yes. Jones World. We'll set fire to it. We just, I mean, yeah, like you are saying, the defense cannot stop Marshawn Lynch. And that combined with, uh, the basically no passing attack. And a running back committee that can't get past our defensive line. Nondescript running backs. Yeah, I just I I think they'll just they'll be kittens. I mean, 
So I'm going to be a contrarian here. I'm going to say Dallas pulls this one out only because I, I suspect Richard Sherman will pull a hammy or something dancing with the cowgirls or something along those lines. Something weird is going to happen. I think the Dallas offense will just go off in that game. And being in Dallas, I think that's one that the Seahawks very well might drop. All right. Okay. Fair enough. You're wrong. But you're entitled to be wrong. <laughs> I mean, you're wrong about a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is yeah. I try. One. I try. <laughs> that you're wrong about. <laughs> but you are entitled to be wrong. You're entitled to your opinion. This yeah. is America. You your opinion is just wrong. That's You're, all. In America, you can be wrong about it. Well, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it no matter what. Even after the game, I'll say Dallas wins, even if they don't. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's, good that that's, it's good that Skip Bayless has got a buddy in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll close this episode. Thank you so much for watching Seattle Side Up TV. I'm Ian Loney, along with Matt Page and Abraham DeWeese, and we'll see you next time. You were so wrong. No, you're you're wrong. not even. No, I, I, it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. No, watch. It isn't. You watch. No, we will watch. Oh that's, yeah, that's <laughs> what you do in sports. Is you watch. We will be mocking you. While <laughs> we, will, we will text the message. <laughs> <laughs>